want you to think about what is business success. What defines, we hear about the Expedia and the Intel, the, the, the presentation from Tom Davenport this morning was very, very interesting. So we hear about successful organizations and what defines a successful one versus companies that are struggling. Well, the first thing that comes to mind that really defines success is money in the bank, right? So it, it, over the past several years, what was really defined as success is the more money you have, the more successful you, have, you are. But that's not really true anymore. Emotional connection, and when you reach a level of Apple, you, you get fans, you get people who are really talking about your brand, and you, you, it almost reached a level of religious belief about a brand. That defines success also. The third thing is customer satisfaction. We've all heard the thing about, you know, it's much more expensive to acquire new customers than to retain the existing ones. So if you want to be successful, you need to have a good customer relationship. That's the third element. The next one is ethics. Obviously, you could get easy and quick money. You could gain new customers. But if you screw up because you don't have strong ethics, you're going to get caught. You're going to get in trouble eventually anyway. So that's a fourth uh, element. The next one would be, you know, uh, you probably noticed in um, annual financial reports, there's many organizations that are now including a good citizenship aspect, be it, be it the environment or our what they do in the community. So that also is an important aspect. What's next? What's this guy? Who's this guy? Employee satisfaction. So it's, hard, it's already hard to find good talent. If we cannot retain them, we cannot be successful. And we see in our industry, in our small industry, we see people, we hear about people moving you know, from one organization to another. So the web analytics space is evolving and, and people are gaining experience and moving around. The next one is innovation. The day you start, or you, in fact, the day you stop innovating, you start failing. So those are several drivers of success. So there's not a single thing that will magically make you successful. So how, how can we get there? How can we become an Expedia or an Amazon or Google or Facebook, whatever? I think what will define success for your organization, you know about it more than anyone else. So if there was an easy way, so we know Amazon purchase process is fairly clean, simple, and easy, and has been tested and evolved over time into something that is very efficient. Why don't we just copy that? Why can't we just, you know, if there was a magic big copying machine, we could look at the best players in each of our fields, be it, fi be it insurance or automotive or whatever, and just replicate what they are doing. It doesn't work. So th there's, there's a notion of, and I get that very often, you know, uh, people contact me and, and they, they want, they are seeking a, a golden nugget. They want to find what is the magic solution to their problem. The reality is, if we look at all of those companies, the way they got there is because they were continuously improving and making, making small improvements. They never stumbled on a magic thing that suddenly doubled their sales. It very rarely happened. So we need to be creative in a continuous improvement process. And for that, we have three basic elements. You probably heard that. You know, people, process, and technology. Simple, right? Maybe too simple, in fact. Because people, process, and technology it's probably the most simple process or model that you can imagine. But it's how we mix those ingredients that will make the difference between being successful or not. 
So we need to be creative in a continuous improvement process. So what is creativity? Well, if we look at Wikipedia, is supposed to know everything. So let's look at their definition. And I think what's important, interesting in that is having ideas, but being able to bring them to reality. I have plenty of ideas. I have too many ideas, in fact. The challenge is being able to actually do it. So crea being creative is not about having ideas. Being creative is about being able to actually make them happen. So uh, there, there are some interesting quotes, and, and I like to look at other fields of expertise, or music in that case. And I think it, it, what's interesting is being creative is making some, something complex, making it easier. When I worked on WASP, I took something that some people thought was very complex, and I was able to simplify that to provide a tool to do it. When, when you do A-B testing, or when you do optimization on your site, you are looking at something that is complex, and you want to improve it and make it simpler for your customers and visitors. So there are some people, you know, there, there's two school of thought. Obviously, we're web analytics people, so we like data. But Mitch Joel is a well-known figure, figure in, in marketing. And he said, let's kill return on investment. Did any of you had the challenge of justifying a return on investment on social media and raise? Were you able to justify return on investment on social media? I don't see a way to do it very easily. So he's saying, let's kill return on investment. Because if everything we do, we need to justify it based on what is going to be the return on investment. And in that case, implicitly, we think that the return on investment is going to be money. Maybe the return on investment should be any of the success drivers that we identified first. Maybe my return on investment is creating an emotional connection with my customers. Maybe it's being a good citizen, a good corporate citizen. Maybe it's, it's having stronger ethics and opening the books and, and showing really what's going on inside the company. Then there's uh, Seth Godin, who said, ah, too much data leads to not enough belief. If, if we're seeking for justification, but we don't believe, we will never get there. We will never do anything. So when I was doing the presentation, my, my daughter looked at me, and, and she, she's studying in visual art. And she said, yeah, but there's always constraints to everything we do. Be it you know, the type of pencil you use, or the painting, or the, uh, the canva, or the paper that you use, there's always a constraint. So we need to learn within, to, to work within the constraints of our organization. So very often I see um, practitioners or consultants coming up with the ideal scenario for web analytics, and they fail. And it makes them say, web analytics is hard. And they're probably right. Web analytics is hard. Why? Because we try to work on things that we don't control. We try to go beyond the constraints of the specific environment that we're working on. So I would say creativity without measuring the business outcome, it's art. It goes into a museum. So we, we like, as web analysts, we, we like to play with tools. We like to have you know, social media stats. It's great. But it's not always connected with the business. So we have our little fun with our tools and the numbers and everything. So what? So we, we heard Tom Davenport talking about business analytics. That's the next wave. And I, I, Tom's uh, work is, is absolutely amazing for that. So there's always a risk if, if we just work with gut feel. You know, I don't have to go very far or explain that. And then there's Jim's famous quote that maybe you need to be more creative. If your only reason for not being able to do your work 
is because you don't have enough data? Nah, maybe you need to be more creative. So I would say, Data without creativity is what? It's pure mathematics. We, in the, previous, uh, in the previous presentation about the visualization of data, it's amazing. But it's visualiz visualization that is applied for a scientific purpose or a, a business purpose in that, in certain case. So what about web analytics? So we've seen you know, the drivers of success. We've seen the, the struggle between the creativity and the data-driven approach. Where do we sit in, in there? So what about web analytics? So because I do some teaching, I have to warn you, there is some slides. There are some slides that are more academic, but it's not painful. You can stay. <laughs> so what is analytics? Simply put, analytics is the science of analysis. OK. That's too easy. So, so what is analytics, really? It's how a business arrives at the best solution based on a given context. So that's the definition from Wikipedia. Where's the, there's a problem there. Any idea? Optimal or realistic decision based on existing data. The problem is the or. It's not one or the other, it's and. We always have to do compromise. We are always constrained. We know what is the best solution to that darn freaking checkout process. But we cannot do it because we're not synced with the release cycle and IT is uh, constraining us. That's a constraint, but we have to work with it. So if analytics is the science of analysis, what is analysis anyway? Well, analysis, any, any of you, uh, I, I'm always doing this little survey of who played with Lego when they were younger. Usually, I don't know if it's representative or not, but usually analysts tend to have played with Lego. Why? Because we like to deconstruct and we like to reconstruct things. We like to understand how the things are working. So that's analysis. It's breaking something complex into smaller parts so that we can understand what's going on. So when we try to do analytics on something that is too complex, we need to simplify it. And we need to look at the smaller parts and try to optimize those smaller parts. So what's the maturity model? The work I did, uh, basically the model is a way to uh, start a discussion to think about what's going on. So we want to move, right now, the web analytics space, or it's getting better, but uh, until now, the web analytics space has been a lot of uh, apprentice and, and mastership. You know, uh, people th sharing their knowledge with other people. So we want to reach a stage where it, it becomes systematic. It needs to be a process. Analytics is a process in itself. So let's look at that, and I'd like you to, uh, maybe not all of you have, uh, you know this piece of technology called pen and paper? That's very sophisticated. You draw a line, another one, and in the end you get something like this. So we're gonna do a little exercise. I think uh, what I'd like you to do, even if you don't do it live, go back and do it later. I'll, I'll give you the link to do it uh, uh, directly uh, on the site, but I would like you to leave with, with something today. So there are, when I worked on the maturity model, I looked at several models that already exist from different fields of expertise, and I did a synthesis of what are the commonalities between all of those models. So there are six critical process areas. The first one, and Tom Davenport was talking about it, the first one is What's the current culture in the organization? Management, governance, and adoption of analytics. And we'll go through all of those factors. The, the most important one is management, governance, and adoption. The least important one are the tools of technology. So who cares if you use Google or Omniture or WebTrends? It's not the tool that you use. It's what you can do with that tool. 
So the first one, it's very easy, a couple of questions. One indication of the current culture is, you know, talk to any manager and they have a responsibility for, for budgeting and managing some money somehow. Why is it different for analytics? So who got the highest clearly stated role and, and responsibility in terms of measuring success? Maybe it's nobody. Maybe it's a project manager. So you do a project and you want to measure if your project is, is successful. Maybe it's a director or a team lead. Now it's getting better because a project, by definition, has an end, date, an end date. Web analytics never stops. You cannot say, oh, I did budgeting last year. The project is done. We won't do it this year. It doesn't work. So analytics is the same thing. It's not, analytics is not a project. Maybe it's senior manager or VP or several senior managers. That's more interesting. And, and by job definition, I mean, you know that little statement at the bottom of every job, all related tasks? That's not it. Web analytics is not all related tasks. It's not that so small footprint at the bottom of the job description. Or maybe it's implicit throughout the organization. Uh, when we think of the Expedias and, and Yahoo and so on, we, we can feel even from the outside that they are data-driven organizations. It's not the case everywhere. One of the things that I see, it's great to hear about, uh, or the Joe Medi uh, Medibo uh, presentation is absolutely interesting, but they are way up there. And we're, we're, most organizations are still struggling to have at least one analyst doing a good job. And then we hear about those great organizations that have maybe a dozen analysts doing that all the time. So we need to start somewhere. 